and today I'm going to make a video that I told you guys I would make. So yes, this is my bookish turnoffs video. This is different from like the bookish pet peeves that people have done in that this is the opposite of my bookish boxes video. So these are things basically upon hearing a synopsis that might turn me away from that book. So let's say if you're doing like a book haul or a wrap up and there's one book you're holding up that just really piques my interest and I am like, please tell me more. And then you say one of these words. That's basically what this is. Things that'll turn me away from a book. I don't think I need to do a disclaimer that these are just my opinions. I feel like we're all adults and we know that by now these are things that I don't like to read about. If you like to read about them, it doesn't mean they're wrong in any way. People like to read about them. That's why these things are popular. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to get to my first one, which is something I feel like I may have mentioned once or twice on this channel mentioned many times that I hate child narrators. I think they're annoying. I hate books written from the perspective of children. It, I hate child narrators and Oscar is just the embodiment of everything I hate in a child narrator. I just, Oscar is everything that I hate about child narrators. Even though I'm usually not a fan of child narrators. We do not like child narrators. Did you guess it? I hate child narrators. I have tried to read books, you know, from the perspective of a child and I, I understand the appeal. I understand why authors do it. It's like revolutionary scope of looking at things through the eyes of a narrator that does not have a full understanding of the way the adult world works and they have this naivety that comes with age and lack of just living and experience and I understand why authors do it. I hate it. I don't think I've ever really seen it done well, and I think it just goes between two extremes. One of them is just hyper-mature children that are basically adults, because this was an author that just didn't know how to write a child, which, again, I just said I don't feel like anyone really does. And then the other one is just, like, obnoxiously naive. It's a personal one. It just gets on my nerves, and I can't handle it. I can read a book with unlikable characters. I have a harder time with unlikable narrators. I'm okay with like narrators that do like bad things, but just when I don't like the voice of a character, it I it irks me for the whole span of the novel and I can't deal with it. Um, so this is one that's a no. Like if you're telling me about a book and then you're saying like through the eyes of eight year old so-and-so, it's a pass from me. I'm sorry, no. Child narrators for me are just a no. Number two, romance-centric plots. I am not a big romance person. I am not like against it, but I mean, if you're telling me about a synopsis and it's like, Jill is a high power exec in Manhattan until she meets like the laid back man who owns the bakery down the road and he teaches her how to live in the moment and chill out and you know, evens out her crazy type A personality. I'm not going to read it. If it sounds like it's the plot of a rom-com, I'll watch a rom-com. I'm not going to invest that time into a book. It's not my thing. I think the only romances I really read are maybe a classic, or if I can be convinced that there is more to the novel than this. But if the novel is just this, it's just not going to happen. I don't like it. I don't care enough. I said nothing wrong if you like romances. It does not make me a better person or you a better person. I just don't like them. I will watch romantic comedies. I don't want to read them. Number three, and here's where I'm just going to lose everyone. YA. I just, when I was a teenager, I read a ton of YA. And when I was in college, I read a little bit. But now I find I just don't like it. I've tried a lot of different books, a lot of different genres within YA, and I just don't connect to it anymore. I'm like at that point where I can't hear like that high-pitched ringtone anymore. Like I'm too old. I, I find these characters just whiny and too angsty and I don't connect to it. Honestly, when I was a teenager and I read YA, I read it to relate to the characters, to really feel, I felt like as an adolescent, that was something that was really important to me, was to find some 
find a character that I could relate to. Now when I read YA, I don't have that anymore. So I feel like it's just lost that for me. It's lost that appeal. I find it harder to get into it and continue with the story. Even with my favorite author, one of my favorite YA authors was Sarah Dustin. But recently I've tried to read her and I just can't. I can't get into it anymore. It's just not my thing. And I'm not gonna read YA, like I'm done. It's just, I'm past that point. It's not my thing anymore. I don't relate to it. Number four, this is probably the only one where I actually have to be reading the novel for this to bother me, so I guess this is more of a bookish pet peeve. But if I'm reading historical fiction and the author feels the need to remind me what time era I'm in, like I have short term memory loss and I forgot from like three pages ago, and so they just litter the text with things from that era. Like, I think the best example of this that I, I read The Diviners. I started the diviners, I guess is the more appropriate way to put that. And it was set in the 20s, which you could never forget because every page had to have like 10 words related to the 20s. It had to have like Gatsby, Flapper, this, that, old sport, just over and over and over again. I almost felt like it would have been better maybe if it was a tell down show kind of thing. Maybe you should just put the date at the top of the book. Um, and I understand that that is kind of the fun of reading historical fiction is to really get into the time era. I just think it has to be done naturally. And if something like that sticks out like a sore thumb and I'm constantly seeing it and it's really obnoxious, then I tend to not be able to get in the story. So that's a random one. That's more of like a pet peeve than like a turn off because I don't think anyone's going to say that in a wrap up. The next one is not gonna get a rant at all because it's just something I'm not a fan of. I don't really have any reason not to be a fan of it other than it's just not my thing. And those are fairy tale retellings. Again, nothing against them. They're just not my thing. I have really no interest in them. It's not like I have a list of reasons why I don't like them. They're just not for me. I'm not really like a huge fan of fairy tales to begin with, so. And my last one isn't so much of like a turn off as something I kind of, have to think a little more about whether I want to read it. And this is things happening to little kids. I think this one's pretty easy to figure out why. I have a two-year-old son, so if a book deals with something crazy happening to a toddler and it sounds like it's gonna have pretty graphic scenes about like bad things happening to kids, it's not that I won't read them, it's that I'm gonna be on the fence about it a little more just because it is a little more applicable to my life. So. I feel like that one is pretty understandable. <laughs> anyway guys, if you're somehow still watching this and you survived all of those rants, you just won. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hope to see you around soon.